the Port of Brisbane, a trading hub built largely on reclaimed land at the mouth of the Brisbane River. In 2003, the port embarked on the construction of a 235 hectare expansion. Commercial pressure meant some of the land needed to be ready in as little as five years, a major engineering challenge. Design loads for the reclaimed land also established new benchmarks for the port. Marine terminal loads were set at 50 kPa, up from the port's traditional 36 kPa. The site is subtidal, with a base of weak compressible Holocene clay layers in places in excess of 30 metres thick. These clays are overlain by dredged mud up to 9 metres thick, the result of the port's annual maintenance dredging of the Brisbane River, with the material deposited into the confines of the reclamation area under strict environmental controls. Traditional consolidation on such a weak base could take 50 years or more. This expansion project demanded a new approach. First, the site was enclosed by a 4.6 kilometre rock seawall. With the wall complete and the reclamation materials placed, wick drains and surcharging seem to offer the best solution to accelerate consolidation. But wicking isn't always successful. There are documented cases of wick failure in southeast Queensland. And there was no prior experience in Australia with installation of wick drains to the depths or in ground conditions encountered at the port. To secure certainty on meeting timelines for the land treatment, the port embarked on an extensive trial project. In 2006, it invited expressions of interest from national and international contractors to design, install and monitor ground improvement systems. The expressions of interest sought world's best practice and encouraged innovation. Three contractors, Ostris Menard, Kofra Bascalis and Van Ord, were selected to conduct comparative trials at three separate sites within the reclamation area. Kofra Bascalis and Van Ord carried out wick drain trials in the new reclamation area at Terminal 11. Ostris Menard undertook trials on the southern boundary of the reclamation area along the old seawall. They also trialled their vacuum consolidation system, which is suitable for areas where stability is of concern. This was a primary consideration as the site was adjacent to the Moreton Bay Marine Park and the port's migratory shorebird roost. In May 2008, the port appointed three professors in geotechnical engineering to independently review the trials. The trials and the specialist review concluded in December 2008. The trials have provided valuable learnings on the land development process and confidence in the optimised use of wick drains as a ground improvement technique. As Ostris Menard's vacuum consolidation method proved effective where stability is critical, the port awarded a 9.3 hectare vacuum consolidation contract to the company in late 2008. The vacuum consolidation system involves some unique features including a horizontal and vertical drainage network. Another unique feature of the vacuum trial is the 15 metre deep bentonite cutoff wall. With the drainage system and cutoff walls in place, an airtight membrane is applied, sealing the system. Then, vacuum induced suction aids the water removal, speeding up consolidation. The process saved 4 metres of surcharge, removed the risk of slip failure, and allowed land development to the edge of the marine park and bird roost. In early 2009, the port awarded a further 25 hectare wick drain contract to Van Ord following its successful trials. While the port paid a cost premium for the trials, the areas represented less than 4% of the total reclamation area. The costs have been recovered as the Port of Brisbane builds on the knowledge gained from the trials, continuing the challenge of creating high quality land from dredged materials. Mm -hmm.